Vintage News presents. Hey guys, Rocky again. Welcome to another how to instructional video stroke what I've learned about this subject video. So, as the title suggests, I'm going to talk about collecting your domestic Commodore Amiga. So, that's 500, 500 plus, 600, 1200 to a modern LCD type TV. So, I know before we get started, oh, CRT, the best thing in the universe ever. So, CRT TVs are not going to be around forever, and not everybody has room for them, or their other halves won't let them have a big, massive fucking box telly. Like, I've got one here, but I don't like using it because it's a pain in the arse, and it's actually really difficult to get to work right. So, I'm going to talk about the various options there is for connecting an Amiga to a modern LCD plasma type TV, flat, a flat screen TV. As in thin thing, not a big box thing. So, a couple of disclaimers. Disclaimer one, I'm not an expert. This is just what I've learned from messing around and reading online and my own experience, really, and what, what these cables I've bought and stuff. Number two, your mileage will vary. Every TV I've tried this on is different. So what works on one won't work on the other, which won't work on another one, which is an absolute mess. So, a bit of history. In the old days, certainly in the UK, when you bought an Amiga, you connected it to the TV using this, an aerial cable. This end went into the aerial slot on the back of the Amiga, on the back of the TV. This bit went into the back of the modulator, which is either built in on the 600 and 1200, or a external thing that's stuck at the back, the 500 500 plus. Then you do, you would find a empty channel, usually channel 5 or 6, and you would tune the television in to the Amiga signal. It was it was easy, and that's the way everything was connected back then. And of course, you get switches. You'd have to connect, disconnect the TV, and also you just switch back to the t switch back to the TV and all that kind of nonsense. So, doing it this way on a modern TV. My LCD TVs I have access to still have an analog tuner, so I can do this. On the one next to me, it does work. On the one in my bedroom, it will not. And the one downstairs, just no. It's so the cheap TV next to me, it will tune in. It has an auto tune function. It's a pain in the arse to get it to do because I think the signal of the Amigas can be pretty weak. And I've tried it with multiple Amigas, and no two are the same. The picture looks, yeah, it doesn't feel as grainy, and it looks rotten. Now, on newer LCD TVs and flat pans, there is no analog tuner because analog television in the UK was switched off. So it's all digital TV tuners. So the connector might look funny, and it might look the same, but it won't tune in. And every time I've tried it on a digital, when a built-in digital tuner, it doesn't work. So if you have an older analog TV, you might want to try it first. It'll be what's in your Amiga's box. It's basically it's there. These cables are, you know, a couple of pound on eBay or whatever. If you really want to connect your Amiga to a TV cheaply, try this first. It will be a pain in the arse to do because probably you're not using that analog tuner for anything. you probably got Sky TV, Cable TV, whatever. So that's the easiest, well, the cheapest. Try this. No. Next up, we have Composite. Also known as yellow, red, and white. So yellow is video. Left audio, right audio. Can never remember on the two. So... This is a, another relatively cheap cable. You get them everywhere. Now, you can connect this to the back of an Amiga 1200 and a 600. You get yellow. You know, I'll try and put a picture up there. And you get these two. You get the audio out. And the picture looks meh. Meh. And your TV might not display it correctly, depending. It's really what signals your television likes, what way the wind's blowing, far, far, far. On a 500 and 500 plus, the video output, this one, is a mono, as in black and white. So even if you do this on a 500 and 500 plus, it's black and white you get out. Well, it does look okay, but the game's in black and white, and at least you get the sound. So that's option two. Now, some TVs in the UK don't even have these inputs anymore. They might just have a SCAR input. SCAR is like European standard. So you can connect one of these little blocks that are really cheap to buy and you can connect that to the back of your TV. 
Let me get this cable. Now, some really new LCD flat panels, however, don't have SCAR. They only have HDMI. So some of you are thinking, excuse me, guys. Some of you are thinking, well, I know what I'll do. I'll get a converter box, like so. It takes composite in, HDMI out. Doesn't work. We have a scale box like this I've bought. It works great for PS2 and stuff like that. Looks great. Does not work for the Amiga. And the Amiga has a really funny video signal out. There's the flicker and there's scan lines and there's all these frequencies. You can look it up online, it's a fucking minefield of stuff. So you can't just get an HDMI out just like that. It doesn't work. I've tried, trust me. So you can do it using the composite cable. If your TV has a AV connector on it or the SCAR box thing. But putting the composite signal through an HDMI up upscaler won't work. It just doesn't. You can't just you can't just get a cable that has this on one end and an HDMI on the other. It just doesn't work. Trust me, I've looked and I've messed that out with them and it's always in my the video signal needs to be re-encoded. So the next option, and in my opinion, probably the one that most people will go for. Because it's still relatively cheap and it works. So, we get one of these. It's an RGB SCART cable. So this goes into the video output on all the Amigas. They all have it. 5, 500, 500 plus, 500, 600, 200. They all got it. And you get your, your same two audio which have at the back. So you put that in and you get an RGB SCAR output, which is very different from the composite output. The signal is far cleaner, looks a lot better, and looks really, you know, looks great. And the three TVs I have access to, every time I do this, it works really well. Now, on other TVs, it won't sync, and the screen will flicker, and it'll fart, and the picture won't stay. Blah, 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 blah. And again, we have the problem of, does your TV have, an, uh, have a SCAR connector on the back? The majority of modern TVs I was looking the other day still have one. But this is only an... I've only got to be well left you doing it this method. I honestly think this will be out the window soon and we'll be on to more complicated things. This cable was about hang, under £15, between 12 and 15 I can't remember. This is what I currently use if I'm not trying to record any footage of the Amiga, which is a whole other story, which I'm going to do a separate video on. So, I've tested it on all my Amigas, and it works fine. And all my TVs, and it works fine. You'd be surprised how good a uh, Amiga 500 will look on a 47-inch TV with this cable. Get them on eBay. Um, I got mine from Retro Computer Shack, which, guys, super great service. I've got several of these cables for several computers. Now, that's the cheapish options. Now we move into other territory. Move into scan doubler type territory. A scan doubler is something that takes the mega video signal and will make it sort of compatible with modern monitor stroke TVs. Now, there are external scan doublers being sold on eBay right now. They're about between 60 and 80 pounds, really. That takes basically output of this runs it through an external box and gets you out a VG connector, like a monitor connector, which some LCD TVs have for. Now apparently it makes the signal look a lot greater, blah 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 blah, it looks amazing. However, I've, I've seen really conflicting stories about this. I haven't bought one myself because I don't... The VG output is not really what I'm looking for and I don't think it will help me in the long run. I mean, your mileage may vary, it might work great. But again, it all depends on what kind of input your TV accepts. There are internal scan doublers sold by various companies. Um, the one I'm thinking of is one for the 1200. It fits across the, I think it's the Denise chip. And that gives you a DVI connector out of the back, which you can get a DVI to HDMI cable. And that apparently will give you a really good picture on the TV. However, they are about £100. There is one coming out for the 500 and 500 plus range, it's in the £60 range, however that gives you the VGA output which is not really what we're looking for to be honest, because not a lot of TVs have that bloody input. And then you still have to deal with audio separately. Um, there is one other little thing I will discuss right now, you can get boxes like this, 
as I bring it into frame. Sort of. Oh my bloody hell. So this takes the RGB scar out with this, runs it through this, and gives me HDMI out. I'm still testing it with various TVs, and I've had mixed results with that one. No two of those boxes seem the same. That was about £35, that one. They can go up to a couple of hundred. I get some flickery sometimes, other times I don't, depending on the video mode that the game's using or Workbench is using. It's very hit and miss. Personally, cheapest option, get yourself, a, if you live in a country that has SCART, get yourself an RGB SCART cable. You'll get a nice clean picture. And for what you want to do, which is probably just play a few old games, it's cheap and it works. There's no pissing about with getting channels zoomed in all the rest of it. So, that's my layman's, my experience guide of connecting an Amiga to a modern TV. If you have any other comments, whatever, leave them in the description below. Thanks for watching guys, I will see you in the next type video. Bye bye.